<laughs> Again, uh, hopefully you'll like what I'm going to make for you. Um, so you asked for something uh, plant heavy. You said you like Mexican food and you wanted something with mango in. <laughs> I have a special memory attached to mango. <laughs> Great. And we're going to be talking about memories because of your wonderful new book. I've made for you pulled jackfruit with um, cumin, a whole bunch of different spices. And I'm going to make a quick mango salsa to go with it. Sounds brilliant. Sound good? And I've never had jackfruit before. Okay. So first experience, already good. So I've cheated a little bit today. Uh, this has been cooking for about uh, an hour or so. And what's in here, extra virgin olive oil, about two tablespoons, goes into the pan on medium heat. Um, added a couple of these small baby shallots that I just roughly chopped, four cloves of garlic, some cumin seeds as well, some salt, pepper, and then I threw in a can of jackfruit, which has drained um, a little bit of passata, some apple cider vinegar, and uh, this is like a jalapeno salsa, but you can use whatever salsa you have, if you like a red salsa or whatever. And that's just been cooking for about an hour, an hour and a half, until the jackfruit sort of like pulls away naturally and it becomes like quite meaty and fleshy. Mm. And to go with that, I'm gonna make a mango salsa. So very simply, diced mango, some peppers, um, coriander, mint, throw it together in a bowl and then we're gonna mix it together. Yeah. Great, all right. So my career is essentially dedicated to two questions. Why are some people happier than others? And how do we improve happiness? Or how do we increase happiness? And, and recently I wrote a book uh, called The Art of Making Memories because we can see that memory are part of the answer to both questions. We can see that people who have the ability to form a positive narrative about their past are on average happier. If I see or taste a mango, I will be transported back to the time I was 16. I was living in Australia, in Australia for one year. And I saw this weird exotic fruit in the fridge for the first time. They were not introduced in, in supermarkets in Denmark at the time. And I tried it and I remember thinking, where have you been all my life? Yes. You know, yeah. it's sweet. It's a great texture. We can see uh, there are some, some experiments um, where they have planted the false memory uh -huh. in some participants in the study yeah. that when they were kids, they used to love asparagus. Yeah. And in that uh, group of the participants, they become more likely to order asparagus in a restaurant. They'd be willing to pay more for asparagus. Yeah. So it also, memories also shape how we act. Mm. Uh, so I think that's, that's just really fascinating. I mean, so this was a natural progression for you in, in your mind from your previous two books, were all, which were all about, yes, happiness, but comfort and home comforts and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, so earlier I've written about uh, Hugo. It's basically the art of creating a nice atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Food is always great to create a nice atmosphere, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. This book, I think, was also inspired by me turning 40. In Denmark, men on average live to wear 80. Mm. You know, we smoke too much, we drink too much, uh, we have the wrong diet. So 40 means passing the sort of halfway mark, gotcha. right? Yeah. And that just meant that I started to reflect on what were actually my happiest moments in my first 40 years. Mm -hmm. You know, how can I use that knowledge to create happy moments in the future? I'm not into sports cars, uh, yeah. or so 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 that um, I think writing a book is, is a much. Better and you're not into football either, which I found hilarious because I'm not into football either. But there was a, a, an opening chapter about origami, and you were describing this origami <laughs> Premier League or something where the best players were traded, and then it was just so brilliant. I mean, I to I totally get that humor. Yeah. Really highbrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But no, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I try to write in a sort of conversational style. Yes. Essentially, you know, I, I actually try writing as if I was sitting across from somebody else, um, hopefully having Mexican food yeah. and having a nice evening, having an enjoyable conversation. So yeah. mixing studies with personal uh, anecdotes uh, also about the time I said Danish porn on live TV. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I was going to bring that up. <laughs> I read it in the book and I immediately went to my computer and I tried to right. look up your interview with Philip Schofield. Right. And uh, it was so funny because it was such an innocent mistake from your end. Right. And then they, they were trying to cover it. And I, I mean, right. if anyone's listening, they should definitely go stop right, right now and go go watch it. Well, yeah, so, but, but we don't want people to Google my name and then no, Danish no. porn because yeah. that's, that's going to give up some, some wrong up algorithm. SEO, yeah. I was on uh, this morning show. And I mean, the show have more viewers than I have countrymen. Um, and you have those sort of five, seven minutes live to talk about your book. And it's going well, 
And uh, then Phil, one of the hosts, says, so earlier you written the little book of Hugo, now you've written the little book of, little book of Lukke, what are you going to write about next? And I thought his Danish was really good. And I also know there's a lot of people here in the UK who've seen some of the, the TV dramas that have come from Denmark, you know, The Killing and The Bridge and uh, Borgen, as, as you pronounce it. So I said, oh, well done on, on pronouncing Danish. You must have been watching a lot of Danish porn, <laughs> as we pronounce it. But he heard you must have been watching a lot of Danish porn, right? <laughs> so he started to laugh. The other hosts, they, they were laughing. I had no idea where they were laughing. And, and I think Holly turned to him and said, what did he say? And he said, I'm afraid to ask. And that's the end of the interview. Yeah. I had a similar, perhaps less sort of embarrassing incident on the same TV show a couple of years ago is my first appearance on live TV. And I looked at where the prawns were in rehearsal and they weren't there. And I looked underneath and they weren't there. And then I mouthed to myself and out loud, apparently, where are the prawns? And immediately Holly and Phil went into panic mode. I was actually quite relaxed about it because I, I had some backup prawns over here that were already cooked anyway, just in case I was running late. Holly literally darts round the other side of the camera to go and grab some prawns wherever they were from the kitchen and stuff. Um, and in the meantime, Phil was making small talk and he's like, tell me about salt. Is salt going to be helpful? What are we, why are you talking about salt bar? Really talking about the recipe? Yeah. <laughs> In the moment, I would have thought about it from the first person uh, perspective. But because I've seen that clip probably three or four times now, I now remember it as mm. the clip instead of how I was in that moment. Right. So my question to you is, is our constant love of, of, of cameras and videos and taking clips and, and all that kind of stuff, is that almost ruining memories at all? Or is it interfering with, with my ability to remember what it was like in that moment? You know, one of the fundamental things to be able to remember something is of course paying attention yeah. to something. And, and if we're too much on our phones, then we're not gonna pay attention to it if we're taking pictures and so on. One thing I, I suggest uh, in the book is curating the happy hundred. Mm -hmm. So I have thousands of pictures on my phone, you have thousands of pictures of your, on your phone, and maybe we don't actually scroll through them so often. Yeah. But when I was growing up, you had old school photo albums, you yeah. brought together the family and you were looking at yeah. old pictures. And what I suggest is once a year, maybe just before New Year's, gather the family or loved ones yeah. and then go through your pictures and then decide on which are actually, which were our happiest moments, which are our happiest photos from yeah. this year. So curating the happy 100 or happy 10 or happy 50 mm -hmm. and then get them printed out and put it in an old school uh, photo album yeah. to sort yeah. of store it. It's quite overwhelming when you have that many photos and actually being regimented about, you know, Take, taking ones out and deleting them or putting them into an area where you can actually reflect on them a lot quicker yeah. Um, is, yeah, it's a fantastic idea. And food, I mean, whether it's the taste or the scent is a great also trigger yeah. of memory. So yeah. you will see a dish and you'll remember, ah, oh, that was the time, you know, I met with Mike. It was so much fun. Yeah. It was the Danish porn story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know that when I have new ingredients or new dishes, I'll be more likely to remember that. Okay. Uh, so for instance, over the summer, uh, my girlfriend and I, we went to a, a restaurant uh, that is sort of, you know, new Nordic cuisine, sort of locally sourced ingredients. Mm. And we had a tasting menu and, and one of the dishes were uh, ants. Uh, and it was first time I had ants. It was probably also my last time yeah. for ants, <laughs> but it was a quite memorable yeah, yeah. Uh, evening. And yeah. I've had, you know, fermented shark. I've had uh, yeah, snails on the street. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, a quiet taste. Yeah, a quiet taste. <laughs> yeah. Um, polite words. But, um, but I think it's fun to try out new stuff. Yeah, um, absolutely. Okay, so I've just made you this very quick salsa here. Um, I hope you don't mind chili. I should have asked you that before. I love chili. Good. <laughs> you had me nervous then. Um, so that's the jackfruit? That's the jackfruit. Wow, right it there. almost looks like chicken or something. Yes, like that, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's almost like pulled pork after yeah. you've cooked it for yeah. like four or five hours. And you can give us your absolute honest opinion. Brilliant. I love getting criticism, feedback, whatever you want. If you find it's great, it's great. But otherwise, please. You'll edit it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll edit it out. We'll edit it out. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a very meaty dish. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's really rich. Uh, this would make me really full. Good. Um, I like this. Does it have a name? Uh, we should give it a name. Mike's Jackfruit and Mango Salsa. Does that sound good? 
How about Mike and the Jack Crew? Mike and the Jack Crew. <laughs> that is perfect. That's definitely, they'll call it that. One of the things I recommend people also doing uh, is creating uh, the Apollo picnic. Mm. So the concept is everybody brings an ingredient or a dish they have not tried before. It could be Mike and the Jack Crew. Yes. Um, and you do it around uh, June 20th because that's when the moon landing happened, the Apollo mission. Oh, yeah. And that means that over time, you know, there's going to be an announcement of, oh, this is the 50th anniversary of, of the moon landing, the Apollo mission, that's going to trigger the memory yeah. of a lovely afternoon yeah. where everybody was talking about this amazing Mike and the Jackfruit dish. Mm. If you want to catch the rest of our conversation, uh, make sure you click the link and you'll get a link to the Spotify or Acast or whatever your podcast mm. player link is. And then you can hear the rest of our chat. Good. <laughs> this, this is really good. Thank you so much for watching this video. There's so many others for you to enjoy right here. Check out the doctorskitchen.com, sign up to the newsletter where I give science-based recipes every single week. There's a podcast, there's two books, there's loads more content on social media, doctors underscore kitchen, and I hope to see you there.